On the Sunday after Christmas, the church always focuses in on the Feast of the Holy Family. It's a reminder that despite the unusual circumstances of his birth, during his growing years, he experienced what we would call today the nuclear family. Kind of an ordinary upbringing. But you might ask yourselves, what's ordinary about families? Each one of us here would probably have a, a different story about the different tracks our own family took. A few might be able to speak of the nearly ideal situations of, a, of loving parents, of good economic situations, and no real problems or crises to speak of. But that's only a few, not the many. Some family stories are really distressing with severe dysfunction with abusive parents or abusive children. Sometimes severe, serious sibling rivalry or alcohol and drug related problems or real marital, marital discord. Most of us fall somewhere in between, not the ideal and not the totally dysfunctional, but we are a mixed story. Our families have good times and bad times. There's success and there's failure. There's loss and there's, there's gain. There's sometimes real difficult economic situations and sometimes great economic success. Today is the Feast of the Holy Family, as I mentioned before, and even that family had its mixed stories. There was a pregnancy out of wedlock. There's severe economic situations that brought a child into the world with apparently no real economic stability. There's displacement early in life with a flight to Egypt. There's a story we had in today's gospel, gospel of a preteen runaway. And that's only from our very limited knowledge of what the scriptures tell us about the family of Jesus. The point that I would like to make today is that all families could really benefit from that optional second reading that we heard from Paul's letter to the Colossians. He has this image of putting on different pieces of clothing, but it's not clothing that he's really talking about, but virtues. And if we could apply this to ourselves as members of a family, or to the whole unit of the family, we could really mark this feast in a, in a positive way way. Paul says that we need to clothe ourselves with heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Couldn't all of us benefit from doing a little bit of that? Maybe especially the forgiveness and patience part. He goes on to say that we need to bear with one another. Forgive whatever grievances you have against one another. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. And then Paul says the last piece of clothing needs to be love. Because love bonds the rest together. Who among us could not benefit from such a dressing, such an outfit? We could grant forgiveness or seek forgiveness. We could find our way to a, to a life that embraces humility, gentleness, and patience in our family. What a great way to celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family. And in doing so, we can give ourselves and our families a belated Christmas gift.